in this video, we're going to take a brief look at a classic paper about mental rotation by Shepard and Metzler, published in 1971. In this paper, participants were asked to identify whether two objects presented to them were essentially the same object rotated or if they were two separate objects. You can see in uh, panel A here, we have an example of um, a picture plane rotation. And so this is like an, an image which has been rotated um, in the picture plane. In panel B, we have a depth rotation. So if I understand uh, correctly, this would be a bit like if you were to put the object on uh, like a stick like this pointing upwards and rotate the object in that way. In the third panel, we have examples of um, 3D objects which are actually different shapes. So you could argue that um, this is kind of like the control condition. Now, what was done? So participants answered um, many of these questions. And not only did we have these three um, conditions, but one of the really important variables in the experiment was the degree to which the objects are rotated. That was a really important part of the experiment. The key thing that was measured was the reaction time. So the stimuli were presented, the participants um, made a decision and the reaction time was recorded. So if we look at the results, what we find is um, the top graph here shows the results for the, the picture plane rotations and the bottom graph shows the results for the, the depth rotations. The x-axis represents the angle of rotation in degrees. So if it's zero, then you're basically looking at the same object. If it's 180, then that's rotated 180 degrees. The y-axis is the reaction time. And one of the things that should really stand out for you in this graph is that there is um, a linear relationship between the angle of rotation and the time that it takes you um, to respond. Now, what does this mean? So it kind of implies that um, you might be doing some kind of mental rotation in your mind. So you could also use the idea or the, the term, um, the terminology of a, of a mental model. So imagine how you do this. Um, the idea would be you look at one of the items and you essentially construct a an internal mental model of the, the shape in three dimensions. And then you can perhaps use your mental model. You can apply operations to it, like rotate. Um, and so imagine you've built this model um, in your mind and you can simulate it moving. Um, and so it's kind of obvious. Um, if you simulate this thing moving a little bit, then that won't take very long. If you simulate it moving a full 180 degrees, then that would take longer. And so if in your mind you are doing this mental simulation, this mental rotation at the same kind of speed, then you should get um, this kind of linear relationship here um, between the amount of rotation and the amount of time it takes to respond. So that was just a really quick run through of this classic paper. If you're interested, I recommend going and finding the paper. It's extremely short and you'll be able to find out a bit more about the experimental details.